Hi, I'm Peter Mezit, host of Great Gardens. In this edition, we're going to talk about fall planting, uh, some things you want to know if you're putting plants into the ground this fall. And we're going to talk to three experts here at Western Nurseries that are going to tell you proper planting techniques, what to look for, how to plant properly, and some things that are particular to individual plants when you put them into the ground in the fall time. So come on along and let's meet these folks. Hi, we're in the Western Nurseries Garden Center and I'm here with Henry Pat, who is one of our horticultural uh, sales staff here at the nursery. And uh, I just want to ask Henry, why is fall a great time for planting? Well, it's an excellent time because in the fall the root system of the plants increase tremendously versus most other times of the year. So it's able to store and come through the winter uh, usually with great performance and ready to go in the spring. It also gives the plants about uh, a window of uh, close to 90 days if you plant in September so that they get used to the soil. And that's another thing plants have to do. They have to get used to the soil. So really fall is an excellent time to plant. And so the plant, Henry, is actually bringing what is it, sugars and carbohydrates down into its root system? Yeah, it, it's storing. Uh, usually uh, everything that living on this planet, whether it's people, animals, or plants, are affected by the sun. Uh, the sun, as we know, in June starts getting less. The plants sense this through their leaves and growth habit, and they sense the sun is getting less, and because of this, they're now starting to slowly store for the winter. They, they need these food supplies to get through the winter. Mm -hmm. So fall is an excellent time to plant. Uh, the earlier you do it in the fall, the more time the plant has to get used to the, the soil. Now let's talk about that. If you plant a, a tree or a shrub later on in the fall, say end of October, beginning of November, is there still enough time for that plant to get established? Is it still better? for the plant to be in the ground? Oh yeah, a any plant should be in the ground. You gotta remember that if it's a plant above ground in a pot going through the winter, you're gonna have periods of, of warmth. Uh, you might have a week or two of very warm weather, no snow, the plant warms up, and as a result, it, it might start to grow a little bit. The plant has to be dormant to go through the winter successfully. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's very important that uh, you, know, you get the plants in the ground so they can go dormant. Dormancy is the trick on plants to survive during the winter. If you're dealing with ground covers per se, uh, you could plant you no know, ground covers now. I would do it earlier in the fall, September, October. Um, they, they should be mulched uh, also to go through the winter. The shallow root systems. Yeah, it's just kind of a yeah. shallow root system, but uh, you no, know, anytime you do a ground cover, you should mulch them so they go through the winter. Right. Um, strawberries, uh, that's kind of in the, the fruits and vegetables line. Uh, those have to be also mulched, and usually you mulch strawberries around the beginning of uh, December. That's when the ground has some freezing in it, mm -hmm. and uh, by putting mulch on top, it keeps the ground dormant. So it sounds like a big part of fall planting, or when plants over winter in general, is keeping that root zone uh, temperature more consistent because you don't have the wild fluctuations that you do with the air temperature once it's in the ground. Correct, and this is why when you plant in the fall you should mulch all your, your plants. The other thing you want to do when you mulch, you want to be sure you, you leave a, a ring of air space maybe an inch or two around the immediate trunk. Um, the reason for that is so the root system can breathe. Mm -hmm. um, all root systems have to breathe in order to live. Um, the other thing which is not discussed too much in horticulture is, is the mice factor. Um, mice, uh, the first snowstorm that comes along, um, six, eight inches of snow that cuts down the mobility of the mice that haven't made it into your home during the fall. <laughs> so now you're going to have a problem with mice looking for food. They'll hunker down into the mulch and they'll make tunnels hoping they can hit the back of right. plants. If they can hit the back of a live tree that has mulch up against it, they will actually eat the bark off and you could have a, a dead tree the keep following the year. away from the trunk. R right, the so you always want to keep an inch or two away from the trunk when you plant trees, right. whether you're planting in the spring, the fall, or the summer. With mulch in general, do you want to use a little more mulch with fall planting than you would say if you planted something in the spring? Not necessarily. Uh, mulch is an insulating <laughs> factor. Mulch in itself, generally, you know, two inches, I would say, is kind of the norm 
bomb. Yeah. Um, by doing that, uh, you're preventing the ground from freezing and thawing quickly. Right. And that, that, that's a big problem. People don't realize it. You know, if you just uh, put down even an inch of mulch, you know, yeah, if you've got a very large area, th that's going to work too. But I think two inches is probably the ideal to get through the winter. Of course, we all know that mulch keeps the weeds down and provides right. many benefits that way. Yeah, the other factor though is um, in planting large plants such as trees, um, those roots to get established in the ground, it generally takes 30 to 45 days to grow another seed of uh, another set of feeder roots. Okay. Um, that's on a new plant. Plants that have been dug this spring, um, those roots have already reformed. But growing out into the soil, it generally takes a season to fill up the backfill area. That's the area that you've excavated right. to right. get the plant in the hole. Right. And you got to remember, if you have a, a tree that's kind of tall, you got winds blowing during the winter or mm -hmm. late fall, mm -hmm. or even a possible of, of the after effects of a hurricane coming up, you should really stake your trees. Stake the trees. Right. And by doing that, you're going to have a tree that you don't have to upright when the weather's right. bad. Or, or the freezing and thawing and all that. So staking probably more important in the fall than the rest of the year. Yes, very, winds, very much the, so, right, especially right. if you're doing a fall planting. What about watering in the fall? Do you want to water just like you did, would at any time of year when you plant a tree or a shrub or grain? Yeah, it's actually a little more important in the fall. If you have a very dry season, you might want to take your finger, stick it two knuckles down in the backfill and feel how dry it is, uh, say the fourth or fifth day. Uh, the general rule of thumb is you water, want to water good uh, once a week to the middle of November, whether you plant in the spring, summer or fall. Uh, if you have sandy type soil, then you might end up watering twice a week. But water goes down through it. Quickly, right, because right. the water would go down through more quickly. Right. But that water is very important. In order for roots to grow, they need water going down through the roots. If you don't have water going down through the root area and it starts to dry up, then the roots lose the ability to feed from the soil. Right. right. Not to get too technical, but maybe we should look at a plant here, because I think it's important to tell the viewers that the soil medium is different than the soil that you are using to backfill the, the new plant. Correct. Sometimes the water doesn't go into the soil medium and that's why the proper watering technique where you're building a saucer, right. which I think we'll show later, uh, is important so that water goes straight down versus around the root mass. So if we take this hydrangea here, yeah. pull that out, you yeah. can see yeah, you, you, plants are grown in the nursery that the soil medium is different. Can you talk about that? Yeah, usually uh, plant material is grown in mediums that, that have uh, lighter consistency. Usually there's peat moss mixed in. Um, you have bark mulch, you have sand in, in it also. Um, that, yep. these, these are not normal in large amounts in your soil you're going to be planting in. So you should be adding some peat moss in with your soil when you plant. Um, generally on a plant in a pot you want to look at it. If you see a lot of roots growing around you'd, you'd want to tear the roots up a little bit to get them to grow out so they won't strangle themselves in you 12 really, or 15 you, years. You really do want to get rough with it sometimes if you right. see a lot of that circling, don't yeah, you? But, really uh, pull it out. This it really isn't bad. I would say it's been in the pot maybe uh, a year to a year and a half to two years. It's got a nice look to it. You got good soil here so it's not getting root bound. No, it's an excellent root system. But if it does get more root bound, back to the watering, yeah. the water can tend to go right around it. So you really need to rough it up and then the water can go straight down into it once you do that more easily. Yeah, but also the, the idea is to get the roots to make their fibrous roots further mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. All plants need moisture and in order to get the moisture, what they'll end up doing is they'll, they'll end up growing out. They're like making a net to capture the rains. Got it. And it takes two or three years for a plant that's been planted to establish this net to capture the moisture. So even though you're watering once a week to the middle of November, the first year of planting, you definitely want to watch the weather for the next two or three years because you might lose a plant if you forget the water right, you know, right. the third year when well, you get a dry a perfect period. perfect example of that. With the two and a half months of drought we've had, I find myself watering plants that I put in the ground three or four years ago. Oh yeah, yeah. It can be a big problem. So that's a good example. Yeah. Well, thank you, Henry. I think from this point on, we're going to actually show us, we're going to show the viewers uh, proper planting technique, and we'll talk a lot about what we just talked about now with scarifying the roots and the right depth and sure. mulching and all that. So we'll have Jeff Orbagoso show us how to do that. Thank all you, right. Henry. Very good. Yep.
Well, we just learned from Henry Pat about fall planting and uh, what the plant is thinking. And, and uh, now we're here with Jeff Orbagoso from Weston Nurseries. We're up in the back of our garden center in one of our display gardens. And Jeff's going to demonstrate a lot of what Henry talked about in terms of proper planting technique. Jeff, it's all yours. You've dug a hole here and uh, tell us what you're doing. Hey, Peter. Well, got the hole all set and, um, you know, it's been a real hot summer and uh, we've got a, we're in a particular area that's real hot and dry. And so... Is this a south facing slope that we're on? Uh, I think it is, right? South facing, yep. So it's going to get a lot of that, that sun mm -hmm. in both the summer and the winter. And so we've chosen a plant that's suited well for this area, which is really, really critical because uh, uh, you could go wrong if you planted, let's say, like a large leaf roadie here or something that doesn't take that hot, um, hot dry weather. Sun, right? Yeah, so this is a real, a real tough plant we've, we've chosen. What is this plant? This is a, uh, a butterfly bush, the Budlia. Mm -hmm. This particular one is the Nanho Blue, and it's a, a compact Budlia. How so tall is it? Uh, maybe four to five feet, not, okay. not quite as tall as the average one. Okay. And uh, so, like I said, what do they like for soils? Can they take poor soils? They can. They're they're really uh, adaptable to different soils. So they could take uh, pretty much anything you throw at them, as long as you're able to water and care for it. Good. You know, Good. like and any. It plant. looks like yeah. we're looking at some pretty clay soils here. This is real clay, uh, and if you pick up a few clumps, you can get the idea. How it's not really falling apart right away. Right, and right. Um, you can break it up and see these these uh, the small particles that make it difficult for roots to the feeder roots to really pass through. Right. So, so I see that a lot of organic matter with the mulch and everything that'll help loosen it up. That's exactly what we're trying to do. We're trying to make it so that uh, soon after planting, these roots can go out into the soil. Okay. Um, so basically, uh, I've got the hole already dug, but I do want to remove a few rocks. You know, there isn't great soil once again, so yeah. get get rid of the rocks and. Um, what I've done is we've, we've got it at the right planting depth here, and uh, usually with these pots, I just kind of hold the plant at its base and really just kind of just tap it out a little bit. And usually, if all's well, it'll stay together, and uh, you can see there's a little bit of roots on the outside, but like with the hydrangea before, it's, it's not bad. Uh, you might just have to roughen up the roots a little bit. I, I like to tease them apart rather than cutting them, okay. just because you still got the roots at the end of uh, at the end of all that. So, right. Just get rough them, it up a get little them bit. Facing out horizontally from the uh, from the trunk, so they want to go into the soil around it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep. Can't be afraid so to rough it up a little bit. Scruffed it up. Much. There you go. And it's a butterfly bush, so I think it'll be okay here. Uh, and uh, you do want to face it, you know. In a way, in, in a way such that it's pleasing to the eye. So it depends if you, it's a foundation planting, you know. Most give the good side out right, yeah. from this direction. Sure. So uh, maybe something like this mm -hmm. might be appropriate. And uh, you know, we've checked the depth, but uh, once again, you know, I usually use the, the digging spade. It's pretty much at at the uh, soil level right here. And you want to look for the the flare in the roots. Actually, sometimes there's some soil built up, especially with bald and burlap. Not so much with potted plants. Right. Yeah, you definitely want to um, have that flare expo exposed. If you plant too deeply, um, the roots need oxygen, so they might suffocate a little bit. So you definitely want to err on the side of it, having at or slightly above grade. And with the fall planting, no different than the spring or the summer planting, right? That, that pretty much stays, stays true no matter what season, okay. that rule. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to mend the soil a little bit here. Uh, we don't need to go crazy, but just... Uh, because it is clay soil, or even if it was sandy soil, you might just want to add a little compost to well, the backfill. We do uh, have a little fill. organic matter here already, but let's say you didn't. What's the it, most compost you'd want to use? Uh, probably about a third compost. One third to two thirds native soil? Right. You want to use okay. the existing soil because that's what it's eventually going to have to get acclimated to. Right. But give it a nice little start, healthy soils. Yep. So, should be good. And Peter, what we're also going to use is a little bit of this uh, super phosphate. Mm -hmm. And um, this has, if you go to your local nursery, you'll see that's the high middle number here. That's the phosphorus. That's the one, yeah, that's the phosphorus, what you're looking for. It's a root stimulant. And the idea is that in the fall, if it's early fall still, we'll get the plant going. And uh, it'll help it get established and get right off the bat in springtime. So healthy soils, a little bit of phosphorus, and that plant gets established a little quicker. Exactly. Okay. You don't need a, a, a ton, just, you know, about a handful or so. 
for this size shrub? If it were a tree, maybe two or three handfuls. Right. Okay. Yep. And uh, okay, so so I think we can go ahead and start uh, backfilling here. We've loosened up the roots, and what I'll do is I'll just uh, backfill about halfway. And what I like to do, Peter, is just tamp it, tamp it slightly. I don't like to compact it too much because the roots do need room to spread. But just lightly tamp around the plant. Okay. okay. I'm gonna go get the hose ready for you because I know you're gonna ask for that next. Yeah, that's water is pretty important here, so. How, big, how much bigger did you dig the hole uh, compared to the size of the root mass? Well, we typically dig the holes uh, three times as wide as the root ball is wide and uh, the same depth as the root ball, whether it's B&B or container. As long as that trunk flare is exposed, that's a good way to do it. And the, the idea behind that is that the, the, the plant isn't going to settle in the future. Right. If, you if you dig a hole that's too deep, right. chances are that ground will get compacted if over there's time. there's soft soil down beneath it, right. Exactly. Okay. So again, here we're just going to double check, see where the roots are. Mm -hmm. It's got some surface roots there. So we're just about at the level where we can, uh, we can go ahead and backfill with mulch. Okay. I'll help you kick that around a little bit. And what I want to do is, because it's a slope, Peter, is just give it a little bit of a rim on the bottom part of the yeah, slope. Yeah, I'll help you with that. I don't know. I'd say it's about a 30 degree slope here. So, and the idea is that you're just going to, when it rains or when you, when you hand water, the water will just tend to, to uh, stay put and a uh, good way to conserve water, especially in these hot summer months. It's very important for the water to build up right around the root mass <coughs> and go straight down deep because unlike your lawns, plants have deeper root systems? That's right. You want to you wanna, uh, water deeply but infrequently. That's the key. Okay. All right. Let's get some water then. Yep. There you go. It'll turn on more. There you go. Yeah. And you want to see that fill right up, correct? Yeah. You want to, sometimes I'll even water, let it all seep down deep into the soil and then come back just a few minutes later and water again because sometimes with this hot weather it really makes the soil quite dry and you'll find it disappearing quite rapidly. Okay. <clears throat> so what we'll do is we'll see the water build up here after a few more minutes and uh, we don't have a lot of pressure in this hose right yep. now but it would build up and sink down slowly and you'd even do that a second time. Now, fall planting, just as important to water it just as heavily? It's, you, what you want to do is, uh, once you've got it going, after a couple weeks, you want to taper off the watering schedule, you know, initially a couple times a week, and then um, the closer you get towards Thanksgiving, maybe once a week to once kind of harden it off for right the winter. Right up until the first frost. Up until Thanksgiving, the first, yeah, the first so hard make sure frost your of the year. plants are nice and wet going into the frost. Okay. That's exactly right. Well, Jeff, thank you for demonstrating uh, fall yep. planting technique on a southern facing slope. Yep and uh, talking about the right plant for the right location, the right technique of digging the hole and planting depth, fertilization, soil amendment, watering. Very good. We'll uh, next go on to talk to Kathy Bergman as she'll discuss uh, some specific plant varieties and how to uh, plant them in the fall time. Now that we've talked about uh, proper planting technique in the fall, uh, we're going to talk more about specific plants and some limitations or non-limitations about planting them in the fall time. And we're here with Kathy Bergman. Hi, Kathy. Hey, Peter. And uh, in general, are there any plants that you worry about in terms of putting them into the ground uh, in the fall time? I think there are a number of them. There are certain plants, say all of these grasses, that uh, need such a long amount of time to be able to get their root system going that if you were to plant them after about the middle of October, 
you might very well lose them the following so spring. So kind of a mid-October deadline on yes. some plants. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of evergreen shrubs and trees that are a little iffy as far as that goes too. Uh, a number of the hollies, the Ilex cornata, that sort of thing, definitely have them in the ground at least by the end of October. Okay. Uh, I know that some people say that hemlock, which you certainly can't dig out of the ground to transplant uh, in the fall after late October, I personally wouldn't put one in the ground in my house okay, so that after that time. Hemlock's kind of finicky. They are. About taking root. It's about taking yeah. root and not yeah. having enough time once you're past that mid-October yeah. point with a few types of plants, but not... Yeah. But you have too, to too realize much. that there are certain plants that are, especially the, um, the evergreen plants, uh, trees go to sleep. You can plant a maple in the ground as long as you can dig the hole. But an evergreen isn't quite asleep and you've got it stuck there mm -hmm. and it's suddenly very cold and it has no food and it hasn't made enough roots and what does it do now? Okay, so more with the evergreens. Exactly. And you mentioned Ilex cornata. That's a, a zone six plant I happen to know. So yes. the ones that are yes. marginally hardy in this area right. like your Ilex cornata. Yes. And for the most part, if you give them the right food, the right place, put them in the ground at the right time, they're going to work. Right. I have them. Right. And I live eight miles from here, right. so it works. Right, right. Just what about a little extra mulch and that kind of thing? Should you do that if you're at the end of a I think, plant? yeah, I think especially the first year. First but year. remember, when you mulch it up, pull that mulch away in, in uh, April, or you could be asking for bugs and disease. Right, and, that's and also the mice in the winter can get in there yes. too. So. Yes, the okay. mice and the chipmunks in the winter. All right, and uh, we actually, in back of us, if we want to walk over here, we brought some roses. Uh, Kathy, I know you happen to specialize in roses, and you could probably talk all day about I, roses. I, yeah, these but are the roses, love of my life. Roses have some uh, peculiarities with them as well, mm -hmm. and in terms of fall planting, let's talk about what you do with roses. I think fall is one of the best times to plant roses for a couple of reasons. First, it's a very healthy time for them to go into the ground, but second, roses very often in the end of July or into early August will get black spot, mildew, they'll slow down, their little petals will get smaller. Suddenly, you can see, I mean, we've had, what, four or five days of nice, cool weather, and look at these beautiful creatures. They pop out immediately. So here you are, you have this gorgeous plant, whomever. Come here, sweetheart. <laughs> this is called Lasting Love. Take Lasting Love home, and she looks perfect, and you can see exactly where you want to put her instead of three weeks ago when you were wondering what she looked like because she didn't have a flower on her. Now the roses her. have been in bloom for, for oh, yeah. months here. They do, but then they take off. They take these little vacations. And when they it like gets it really again in the fall. They yeah, and they here they go. are. They're, they're up again and they're happy and they're gorgeous. You know where to put them. And as long as they have time to set out their roots, it's perfect for them. You have to remember when you put them in the ground uh, at this time of year, excuse me, lasting love, thank you, that what you want to do is mulch them up over this part. Put them in the ground, give them a good feeding once now, and that's it for the rest of the year. But right away you mulch up that high. Right up to there. This is a tea rose. She is a little harder to, to handle than a shrub rose. This is Belinda's dream. Mm -hmm. Belinda is a shrub rose, and of course the knockout roses are also shrub roses. Mm -hmm. These guys, you can grow, grow under your dining room table, and if they never see mulch, they don't care. Okay, so the mulching is important with the hybrid teeth. Very, very, and it won't hurt these guys either, so if you haven't been doing it, it might be just a good idea to just do it. Now, is that any time of year you want to mulch up that high, or mostly you're talking for, about No, the for the roses, yes. In the fall? Yes, because very often okay. they are... Um, they are attached to a different root system. So, right, right, they're grafted. Yes. Yep. Then, when there has been a deep frost, you want to mulch some more. You can mulch all the way up to there, like about 18 inches if you want to. Um, I was just saying before that if you take a little ring of, of um, chicken wire and fill it with either mulch or with um, especially oak leaves, which are the best thing to put in there, they'll take care of them over the winter and they won't freeze and thaw and freeze and thaw and you won't have a problem in the spring. Right, right. Uh, what else? Now that 18 inches, are you cutting the plant back at all? No, okay. because all roses get some amount of winter kill on their stems, on the edges. You, you're going to get that anyway. Don't cut them down, wait for them to be winter killed and have to do it again in, in April. So all roses, not just the hybrid teas, that's don't right. cut them down. That's right. And the Mulch only up. the 
only thing I think might be um, different is if you have, this is a climber, this is my friend Joseph's coat. Mm -hmm. They send out very, very long canes. Joseph gets to be about 12 feet tall. You can cut those back so you don't get wind damage. Okay. So roses do require a little bit of a little bit, but they're recognition. absolutely worth it, and it's a perfect, perfect time to plant them now. Well, they've been very popular in recent years, and I can't believe all the new varieties. Gorgeous we get creatures. So, uh, other issues with fall planting and uh, limitations. I think transplanting is something we didn't talk about mm -hmm. too much. Certainly, if you want to transplant uh, some trees, there are limitations. Kathy, tell us about a few trees that you would only want to dig in the spring, but not the fall. Well, I think we have a great person here. Um, birches only can be dug in the spring. Uh, there are a number of evergreens that can be dug in the spring and the fall, but not when they are flushing out new growth. It's not okay. safe. Um, these guys, if, if you try to dig them at any other time of the year, it messes up their internal system and they will not do well. So pretty much before the leaves come out. Exactly. With the birch. But, but, if you would like to take him home and put him in the ground right now, or really up until end of October into November, yeah. it's perfectly right, safe. Right, right, right. So most general rule, if you're gonna transplant trees in your yard, you wanna do that before they leaf out, mm -hmm. and with the needled evergreens before you see the new growth. Yes. Some deciduous and some evergreens can be dug later or transplanted yeah. in your yard later on. And what I think the audience needs to know is that they need to come see the list either on yes. our website or yep. in our garden center or any other garden center for that matter, yep. we have that information. Oh, um, fertilizer, give it a root starter. Don't mm. pour fertilizer on it at this time of year. Not too much fertilizer. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. Kathy, thank you very much. Thank you, Peter. Very helpful. Thank you for watching this edition of Great Gardens. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the show. If you have topics you want to see us cover on future editions, please contact us at the HKM studio, and we look forward to covering a broad range of topics in the future, and we'll see you next time.